come back to dream and destiny. We're inside the prison now where Joseph was arrested for no crime at all. His conscience was clear and as I mentioned before, they arrested his body. They put his legs in chains, but they didn't arrest his soul. Sin didn't overcome this man and he was free in Christ, though he was in prison. But um, everything going on in the prison was not just an ordinary uh, uh, chain of events. Everything was under God's supervision because God descended with his son or with his daughter into the trial. He got descended with him in the prison. So today, you are sending me this question and I pray that I will have a favorable answer coming not from man, but as I pray, coming from the Holy Spirit who instructs us through the word of God. And your question sounds like this. One of the deepest human feelings is being forgotten. This is very deep, very distressing. The other day, I didn't notice, I, I just left my son, uh, my, uh, my grandson playing alone on, in sand. And I didn't tell him that I was going a bit farther to f fix a problem, then I would come back. All of a sudden, he stood and he saw that he was alone. He was kind of forgotten there. Or did you see a little child lost in a fair or in a crowded area alone? What kind of distress and desperation? And you're asking me and telling me that one of the, of the deepest human feelings and distressing is being forgotten and having your good, the good you did to others, rewarded with indifference. You know, sometimes it's easier to take the, the bad response of the people against the good things you did, it's easier to take that than to take indifference. In fact, the, the opposite of love is not hatred, it's indifference. So indifference sends you a message that you don't exist. You have no value, you, don't, you really doesn't, don't count at all. And you're telling me, what would be of comfort in this kind of situation? I would simply start telling you that you must always separate, but always permanently until it becomes a way of life. You always must separate the way you are seen by people and the way you are seen by God. These are not the same. Sometimes we commit the horrible mistake that uh, because of the uh, bad things that surrounds our lives, bad words or being despised or put down and things like that, we literally come to ignore the fact that we are very precious in the eyes of God. And we are sinning against our own soul when we forget this. As an answer to your question, what, be, what would be of comfort in this kind of situation? I would like to share with you uh, the moment when uh, John Haas was burned at stake for his faith. Well, before leading the fire to kill him in those horrible conditions, some of the priests that were there around him, they offered a prayer that was usually offered or a formula better said, they said, now we commit your soul into the hands of the devil. They, they told that man. And when somebody would hear words like this, I imagine being extremely distressed. But in the same situation, John Haas lifted up his countenance, looked up at heaven, and me, Lord Jesus, I commit my own soul into your hands. What a difference. You're asking me that when you are met with indifference, what would be a, of comfort? Keep always in mind that there is a world of a difference. They are an ocean apart. What people think uh, or see in you and what God thinks and sees in you. So there in, in the prison, you know the story of the two famous prisoners. They were ministers of the of Pharaoh. They, both of them uh, were condemned 
to prison, and as soon as they were arrested, the butler and the cupbearer of the prison, of the, of the of Pharaoh, were thrown in prison. They were put under the care of Joseph. And Joseph was not caring only for their stomach or for their boots. He was caring for their feelings too. In the morning, he sees them uh, sad. And uh, he, he asked them, why do you look so... Th this is uh, uh, Genesis where in, in chapter 30, uh, 40 and uh, beginning with verse 1. And this is verse 6 where Joseph comes and looked upon them in the morning. And in verse 7, he asks the officers, why do you look so sad today? First of all, he could not have asked this question if he would have been a sad and miserable prisoner himself. You cannot talk about misery or sadness in other people's lives when you are a victim of the same. So Joseph asked them with a different countenance. He said, lift up your heads, brothers. No, 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 we're having a problem, they said. We had a dream, each of us, uh, we had a different dream. And they, they told him the dreams. Uh, the dream brought sadness and fear into their hearts. They feared death. They feared a horrible end. And they had no interpretation for their dreams. But Joseph said, no, be of good courage, brothers, verse 8. He says, do not interpretation belong to God. Why would you be sad? You just share your dreams, please. And he didn't say, I know how to interpret it. He said, yeah, interpretation belongs to God. He wouldn't miss any opportunity to uplift the name of God. Let's learn from him. And uh, we will we'll find very creative situation of uh, directing the attention of the people to God. If that will happen, first of all, in our own hearts. His heart was full with God. That's why he was exuding at every step, in every uh, situation, again and again. Oh no, he said interpretations belong to God. And they told him the dreams and very, very very uh, important to be a true man. He didn't want to make people feel comfortable. No, he wanted them to have access to the truth. So he told the cupbearer, three days from now you will be saved, you will be restored. And the same Joseph who brought this good news, like an evangelist, to this cupbearer, the same man, brought a very sad, tragic, sinister news to the other one, but no less true. He said, three days from now, you will be dead. They will execute you. He was so dependable, so truthful, so dedicated. He was really loving them. You don't love somebody when you tell him imaginable stories or things that are not true, like about your health. Oh, you're doing good, everything, and you know it's not good at all. That's not love. That's a different kind of attitude. Joseph could stand with his testimony before these two people and before God. Now, he stretches out his hand because he wants somehow to help himself. Like we have this tendency, in, uh, the book of Job said, the, the one that falls stretches his hands. And he tells that man, when you will be back, restore there, remember me. I'm innocent here in prison. I was sold against my will. I was taken from my family. I have a story I ca can't even share. But remember me and tell Pharaoh about my situation. He could be the only one that could help. But the Bible said that after the man was restored, the chief butler uh, uh, didn't remember Joseph, but forgot him. What do you feel in a situation when you're good did like that evangelist, young evangelist uh, Joseph in prison, bringing him the good news when you are forgotten. Well, there is an antidote to that. Yes, you might be forgotten by people. They can forget your name. They can forget everything with you, but God will never, ever forget you. This is comforting enough for your heart. So let's never forget that God never forgets us in Jesus' name.